Hey, it's Ben. Welcome back. How are you doing? So today I've got some important things to talk about. One of the things is really, again, you know, I say that everything's important, but the truth is, is that all of this stuff really is important. Most people who struggle with panic and anxiety expect something bad to happen. They're expecting bad shit to happen in the future, right? They're expecting, you know, either the world is going to end or there's going to be some sort of catastrophic event or there's going to be a major health event, that a health problem that's going to manifest within their body or they're expecting that their spouse is going to leave them or they're going to get fired from their job or someone close to them is going to die or that they're going to die or that they're going to um, hit someone with their car. I know that one was a big one for me. I, I was just, I was crazy afraid of, of hitting someone. Okay, so with this, with this expectation of bad stuff coming your way, there's a couple of really important things to note here. The first thing to note is, is that it's not logical, right? It's not logical that bad stuff is going to come. It's simply a negative expectation about the future. It's about something bad coming. It's anticipatory. It's a negative thing, right? So that's the first part. The second part is, is obviously that anxiety and panic, I mean, there's nothing logical about it. In fact, it's completely illogical. And I remember the day that I came to the realization that anxiety and panic was completely illogical. I was walking around my block and I'm not kidding you when I tell you I was around my block. I mean, I was literally at the end of my block, just taking a break from work, strolling around. I got to the other end of the block and all of a sudden I had this, oh my God, how am I going to get home? And then all of a sudden it hit me. Oh, wow. Even in the midst of almost of virtually having a panic attack on the other side of the block, because of the fact that I couldn't get home, I, I had this intense realization that anxiety and panic are completely illogical. They don't make any sense whatsoever. And so based on that, things from a logical standpoint, in other words, for someone to sit down and say to you, hey, there's nothing to be afraid of. Well, was that helpful? No, of course it's not helpful. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I read lots of different books and things like that with different coping, coping techniques and all kinds of different stuff. And hey, don't get me wrong, coping techniques are very helpful, but on the same token, they're not necessarily going to heal anxiety. So don't necessarily plan on the fact that they will heal the anxiety, but they will certainly help you make it through the rough patch. So the biggest thing there is that the things that are logical are typically not going to be super helpful for you. I mean, for any of your friends to go, well, what are you afraid of? And I know for me, I couldn't get myself onto an airplane. And I had a buddy say to me, he's like, dude, why don't you just take a pill and get on the airplane? Well, that's totally fine. Okay. That's totally fine. Except for the fact that when everything that's inside your body is telling you, do not get on that airplane, do not leave your house, do not even drive to the airport. Uh, like what happens when you get off the airplane? Like when you get to wherever you're going, this is what's going on inside my mind. When you get to wherever you're going, you're going to get there and go, ah, how am I going to get home? Because I mean, if I was having that exact same experience on the other end of the block from my house, I mean, obviously the next thing that was to come was me just totally freaking out whenever I got to where I was. So it's important to realize that the logical, in other words, logical things are typically not going to be super, super helpful. The other part of that is, is awareness. Using your awareness to realize and to come to the understanding that, hey, this is just anxiety. This is just fear. This is just panic. That's all this is. I'm still here. I could have a panic attack in this very moment, right here, right now, and then in a minute or two minutes or 20 minutes or however long it takes, whenever that's done, I'm still going to be here. Panic attack is not going to kill me and it's not going to kill you either. So use your awareness. Your awareness is essentially your ability to observe. Your ability to observe your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and the bodily sensations, the things that are going on inside of you. So to take that one step further, do this exercise. The next time you're feeling anxious, sit down, find a nice quiet place to be if you can. If it's, if it's not super quiet, then you can still do this. But but find a place to sit down and relax and just observe the thoughts that are going through your mind. Just observe them. It's almost like there's a big white piece of paper in front of your face and you can just see these thoughts go by. Don't attach yourself to them. 
because for the most part, we are attached to all of our thoughts. But don't, don't attach yourself to them. Just observe these thoughts as they go by. Just let them go by and just observe them. Just sit there and observe them. And what you'll notice is, is that you, you want to attach yourself to them. And, and that's ultimately how we end up experiencing that ramp up to a panic attack is because, you know, we, we experience a bodily symptom and you go, oh my goodness, what if that gets worse? You know, that's exactly what happened to me. The first panic attack that I ever had, I started, I was on this airplane and I started overheating. I just, my body got really hot. I was super impatient. And all of a sudden everything, I was like, oh my God, what if I don't cool down? What if I heat up too much? Oh my God, like my brain will explode. I'll have a heart attack. All these things that happen. And then, you know, full blown panic, right? So don't attach yourself to those thoughts. Just observe them as they go by. Just observe them. Do the same thing with your bodily symptoms. Just let them go by. Just observe them and go, okay, yeah, I'm feeling the adrenaline rush. I'm feeling that prickly skin. I'm feeling my heart racing. Wow, it's racing really quick. Just observe them. That's it. Just observe. That's all we got for today. I hope you find that super helpful. Make sure you implement that into your daily life. Use your awareness to simply observe and you'll start to notice holes in your anxiety. And what happens is, is as you notice these holes, these holes in your anxiety will start to get bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden you'll start to notice that instead of experiencing anxiety from, you know, early morning till, till you wake up the next day, you'll start to notice that there's gaps in between it, which of course is the idea. Then those gaps get bigger and bigger. And before you know it, there's less and less anxiety. So I hope you find that super helpful. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks again.